Hello, hello, hello everyone, it's Han down here and today, boy oh boy, do I have a story for you. This is a deeply personal story of mine, a story that connects to my childhood back when I was, I think, eight years old and it is completely tied to my childhood home, a place of wonder and slightly horror, as you will see. You see, I grew up with quite an interesting family and the reason I say that is because a lot of family members that I grew up with have and continue to have a firm belief in the supernatural and the unseen. Now, growing up with people like that actually made my life much more interesting and less mundane because, you know, growing up with people talking to you about things that a large number of people across the world don't actually believe in does tend to make life a bit more spicy, let's say. And when it comes to my family, there was one very specific person that will remain unnamed that was responsible for the majority of the supernatural supernatural stories that I got to learn about growing up. And many of those stories were actually connected to my childhood home. You see, that person who will remain unnamed to keep this clean would often talk to me about various different supernatural creatures that had made my childhood home their own home as well. And while many of those creatures were actually described as being kind and friendly, there were a couple of them that were, let's say, less than friendly. But of all the creatures that person ever described to me having made my house their own home, the most terrifying of all, and also the one responsible for today's traumatic story, was the thing that they called the lady in the living room. So essentially, the story I had been told was that when it came to my living room at my childhood home, it was haunted by this ghostly apparition of a weird lady that would only appear after dark, after midnight. Surprise, surprise. The lore that had been described to me was that if you were to go to the living room after dark and you would stare inside, you would immediately come face to face with this disheveled ghostly skeletal woman who would look at you with wide eyes and a malicious grin and would reach out to you in order to take your soul and drag it to the underworld. Now mind you, I was eight years old when I first heard this story, so you can understand how this was slightly terrifying to hear about like a creature like that living inside your house. Now I know many of you will say, you know what, it's just a ghostly lady that is sitting in the living room, she's confined there, just don't go there after dark and you should be fine, which, okay, I hear you, it sounds like good advice. Now, the only problem with that story when I was first told about it, aside from the fact that I was eight years old, was the fact that the living room was exactly next to my childhood bedroom. Essentially, what that meant was that what divided me and the lady in the living room was a two brick wall because my bed was directly attached to the wall that divided the living room and my bedroom. The good news is that when it came to my childhood bedroom, I was sharing it with my sister, so it was two of us in there. But regardless, thinking that there is this malicious, demonic creature very close to your bed, just waiting for you to make the mistake of going inside the living room and staring at them wasn't the best lullaby that I could have back in the day. And the story that I'm about to tell you actually transpired a couple of days after I first heard about this particular lady in the living room. So it all started around 10 o'clock, I think it was a school day, and uh, my mother had sent me and my sister to bed early, as she would usually do, especially during school days. Now, the story about the lady in the living room was still fresh in my mind, which had made the last couple of days difficult for me to find some sleep. However, I was determined to finally read my mind of this fear and finally have a good night's sleep. So after 15 to 20 minutes of squirming in my bed, I finally finally drifted into a nice, relaxing slumber. I think it was around 2 o'clock in the morning when I woke up. The whole room was completely dark. There were just some shafts of moonlight coming through the blinds of my window. And right then and there, I came to a terrifying realization. 
I had to go to the bathroom to pee. Needless to say, leaving my room after dark to go to the bathroom wasn't the most fond of ideas in my mind at that moment. So essentially what I started doing was I started just mustering all of my strength and concentration in order to control my bladder and not piss myself. So I'm sitting there, I'm squirming around, I'm just feeling very, very much uncomfortable and then suddenly I hear a noise inside the room and then there is a voice in the dark saying, what the hell are you doing? That was actually my sister because my squirming had woken her up. So as I'm tossing and turning in my bed, I say, I really need to pee. And my sister replies, then go to the bathroom, dipshit. To which I reply, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of afraid of, of the lady in, in the living room. I mean, what, what happens if I go out there and, you know, I come across her and my sister goes, well, I hope she eats you if that happens, which I think was incredibly uncalled for. At this point, I should mention that my sister was and continues to be completely fearless. I mean, that girl feared nothing. If Satan had haunted our house back then, he would have a problem with my sister. Anyway, I hear my sister just turning around and, you know, trying to sleep again. And from my side, I really don't want to wake her up. So at that point, I am faced with three choices when it comes to my predicament. Choice number one, I just let it out on the bed over there. However, that wasn't a particularly good choice because then my sister would just make fun of me for the rest of my life, something which I wouldn't be able to bear. Choice number two, get up, go to the bathroom, hopefully nothing happens, you get back to your bed and you sleep. Choice number three was that I get out and I stumble upon the lady in the living room. I mean, I don't know, maybe she also needs to pee and she was going to the bathroom and then there we are looking at one another and maybe she's considering whether she's going to eat my soul or not or whether she wants to just go pee. It's just going to be a whole clusterfuck of problems in that particular situation. Now, as I'm contemplating this, I finally muster all of my courage and say, you know what, you're a man. You're eight years old. If your six-year-old sister is not afraid of the lady in the living room, then neither should you. So I get up, I take a deep breath, I tiptoe to the door of my bedroom, I open it up, and I just peek my head out and stare across the darkness of the corridor. Thankfully, I don't see anything, so I slowly get out and I stalk toward the bathroom. I get in, I close the door, I lock it, and then I finally relieve myself. Now, having been able to actually complete this task has given me sort of like this newfound strength, this newfound bravery, kind of, in a sense. I'm thinking, you know what, I made this. I was scared, but I did it, and you know, I'm the king of the world right now. Nothing can actually scare me. So I get out of the bathroom and on my way to my own bedroom, my eyes fall on the edge of the entrance to the living room. At this point, I'm still running on this bravery of having completed my task. So I'm thinking, you know what? I'm just gonna go check. Maybe the things they told me about the lady in the living room were bullshit and there's nothing there. And you know, with this, I can finally let go of my fear. So let's try this. You know, I'm brave. I did it. I went to the bathroom. I can just go and check the living room, see if there's anything in there. So I tiptoe toward the edge of the living room. It's completely dark in there. The only light is coming through the blinds, just a bit of lunar light to tear away at the shadows. And as I finally completely peek out of the corner, I stare in the dark and I see her. Right there on my sofa, I see the lady in the living room. There is this ghostly apparition that is lying on the sofa. Her hair is black and disheveled. She's wearing like this white nightgown and her body is slowly undulating. And at that point I realize she's sleeping. Needless to say, I'm scared shitless at that moment, okay? Something that I was thinking maybe is not real is right there in my living room. And right now I'm just counting my blessings that she's not awake. So as I'm staring at her, I'm thinking, holy shit, we actually have a demonic ghost infestation in our hands. Something needs to be done about this. For some reason, I still have like a bit of bravery left in me. So my mind starts contemplating ways in which maybe I could banish this creature from my living room. So with my eight year old mind, I'm thinking, okay, this thing, the way that it was described to me, sounds like a demonic ghost of some sort. And as I'm contemplating, I'm thinking, okay, I've read a lot of comic books, I've watched a lot of cartoons, and as I'm doing this, I'm thinking, okay, based on those things which are clearly based on reality, 
the way that you can fight against demonic entities is holy water. To my fortune, we actually have a small bottle of holy water in our fridge. The reason for that is that my grandma, who is incredibly religious, would always bring us a small bottle of holy water at the beginning of the month in order for us to bless the house, which means I have exactly what I need inside my refrigerator. With renewed vigor, I stare at the ghost. I'm thinking in my mind, your hours are numbered. And then I slowly turn around and I tiptoe toward the kitchen. I open the fridge and the holy water bottle is right there on the side of the door. So I pick it up, I stare at it, I'm sort of like pumping myself up for what's about to happen, I'm about to go to war with a demonic creature. And then I turn around and I stalk back toward the living room and I peek once again from the edge and I see that the lady is still lying on the sofa. I take a deep breath and I start slowly walking toward the ghostly form and I finally reach close enough to her head and I can hear her sleeping, I can hear her breathing. So I slowly uncork the bottle and I'm looking at her and I'm really really trying to figure out exactly what's gonna happen and I'm internally pumping myself up telling me that you know what once you do this you're gonna go down in history as the youngest person to ever purge a demonic entity from your house so you can do this you can do this so I take another deep breath and as I'm sitting there and I'm watching that creature sleeping I finally turn around the bottle and start spilling the water all over her at that moment she immediately turns around and goes <laughs> From my side, I'm completely freaking out. I drop the bottle down and I start running back toward the corridor from where I came. As I'm doing this, I'm looking back and I can see that creature just limping toward me, which really puts the air on my step. As I'm running ahead, I think that I have three options right now for safety. Option number one is my bedroom, which is the closest room for me to go in. Now, as I quickly think about that, I'm thinking, okay, I go inside my bedroom, it's me and my sister. Maybe the lady comes in there, maybe she goes and takes my sister's soul first, but then what? if it's not enough? What if she decides to take my soul as well? As I'm running, I'm also thinking to maybe warn my sister, but at the same time, I'm thinking, you know what? She's six years old. She has lived a good life. We're good. My second option is the bathroom, which is the furthest room from where I am right now. But I immediately think, you know what? If I go in there and I lock myself in, I'm completely alone. What if this demonic entity can just, you know, pass through the door and completely destroy me? Option number three is my mother's bedroom, which is sort of like a middle distance. And I'm thinking, you know what? I'm just gonna go there. My mother is an adult. She's probably gonna be able to deal with a demonic entity. So as I'm rushing, I just storm through my mother's door and I start screaming, it's the lady, it's the lady. She's after me. She's gonna have my soul. It's the lady. My mother just immediately gets up and goes, what? 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 At that same moment, the lady just storms inside the room and starts going, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Now at this point, the piece of the puzzle that I was missing in what had happened was the following. My mother's sister, my aunt, was actually actually visiting us from a neighboring town and was staying with my grandparents who were living on the first floor. Now what I did not know was that during that particular night my aunt and my grandparents had a fight at which point my aunt decided to come downstairs and sleep in our living room. The reason I did not know that was the fact that my mother had sent me and my sister to bed early, so I had completely missed that part of the night. So my aunt just flips the switch and I can see her completely drenched in holy water, just looking at me incredulously trying to figure out exactly what the hell had transpired there. My mother is just staring at me and my aunt completely unaware of what is going on. And I'm just looking at my aunt thinking that, you know what? What? This lady in the living room bullshit is not real. Thankfully, I wasn't grounded or anything. I explained the situation and they sort of understood what was going on. My aunt and my mother are pretty good people. My sister, on the other hand, was making fun of me for a significant time after that. I kind of wish the lady in the living room was real and had taken her soul. Anyway, that's my story, folks. That's my horrifying story of how when I was eight years old, I dared to go against a demonic entity that turned out to be my aunt. But I did not know that back then, which means I was and continue to be extremely 
brave. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this story. I have a few more where this came from. So, you know, if you like this one, I can maybe tell you a couple more that I have, uh, you know, back in the library of the old noodle lab here. So that's it for today's story time. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember to stay spooky.